In this episode, we're talking mosquito repellents, mics, lenses, and many other things. Stick around. So, hello, everybody. Uh, we're doing Lens Vid uh, number five, episode five. Hi, Art. Hey, you do. Uh, and uh, today we have, as always, a bunch of products and some topics that we want to discuss with each other and with you, of course. And the first one is something that we only recently got for a review and we're actually using right now. Yeah. That's the... The Lark um, Max. Yeah, exactly. The Holy Land Lark, uh, Lark Max. It's, uh, it is basically a wireless uh, microphone system. Yeah. Uh, and what's special about it, you know, it, it has all the, the latest features that a lot of the mics have. So it has this uh, nice ca charging case. Uh, for both the mics and the uh, transmitter or mm -hmm. receiver, actually, receiver. And uh, it has, beside that, um, the, the units themselves, you can see us wearing them right now with a magnet. Uh, we actually used them on the previous video as well. And uh, mine was falling all the time, but now I'm using the magnet, so th it works better. Uh, it ha actually has a place for the magnet inside the box, but... Uh, it's yeah for some reason it the, the magnets tends to uh, uh clamp into the the top part i don't know i need to ask uh, hollyland about this uh but the major feature with this the yeah. new feature yeah it has the same uh, technology for reducing noise just like the uh hollyland uh, solid calm yeah solid calm uh, microphones that we tested and reviewed uh, a few weeks uh, back some interesting demos there check it out check yeah. out the video yeah check out check out the review it's they're pretty cool we use them uh, on on a production on a canon uh, commercial shoot that we did and they worked really great even like in long distances uh, in this case Non, not uh, non uh, pun intended. In this case, the the um, the noise reduction actually serves a slightly different purpose because it's not just for talking; it's for recording. And what I'm thinking is that you can do like noise cancellation after the fact, obviously with lots and lots of software. The Adobe Podcast does a great job, and some other software. There's more of them coming out. Yeah, but if you're doing live stream. Then I'm not sure if there is a noise reduction for a live stream, especially if you're doing like something where you're doing live stream where you're not physically in a studio. Yeah. Because in a studio, maybe you have some solutions, right. but on the go, I, I don't know if any like noise reduction solutions for microphones. I haven't seen you. Yeah. So I mean, it would have to be some kind of a cloud-based service where you, if you... So you need to do it in real no, time. exactly. It's a lot easier to just do it... Uh, in, in, in the mic. In the mic. Right? Yeah. So that's what the... That's what Hollyland decided to do. Yeah. It actually has a separate microphone that it listens for the noise and then it, it, it recalculates and... and reduces it reduces and works that well. Out of the, and it's great. It works well with... And Without the distorting too much. We'll have to see with this one how, we, how well it works. But yeah. So if you're broadcasting from like a show where there's all kinds of noise around and or you're doing interviews like on the street, this is great. We are actually going to take this to uh, IBC. We're going to the IBC trade show in uh, the Netherlands in about uh, yeah less than a month now. And uh, we're going to try this for all the like short content that we want to do, uh, either actually live streaming or very short turnaround time where we don't have a lot of time to actually edit the video and, and do anything with it. So we'll see how it works. And obviously we'll have a review, but uh, this is this is the use case that I see for it, uh, you know, over any other like uh, wireless system of this sort. So that's the Lark uh, Max. There is also a new product, or I think fairly new, I'm not sure, uh, from Nightcore. Uh, on the last uh, Let's Be Talk, uh, we covered the review that we did on the... We did a demo, check it out. Yeah, of, uh, of their uh, fan, like super uh, blower or fan or blower, uh, which is like really, really powerful. This is something completely different. This is like two types of... Yeah, maybe you pick up the, the second one. So these are like two types uh, of... Um, they call them portable electronic and multi-purpose repeller. And now what this is, and you might think that this has nothing to do with photography or videography, 
this is designed to repel mosquitoes. Now, uh, I know about you, but uh, if I'm, you know, going outdoors, I want to shoot wildlife or birds or anything. Uh, this season especially, we have a ton of mosquitoes. It's all over the place. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you have something portable, small, I'm not sure how well it works. We'll have to test it. Let's check it out. Yeah, yeah it comes with these sort of like small pads uh, and they last for like um, six hours each. Uh, so there are 30... Is this like an odor that emits or... I'm guessing. Frequency yeah. or what is it? No, I, I'm guessing. If it was like a, a noise frequency, then it would need this. All right. Uh, so it's probably some but sort you of... you have two types. Is, uh, no, no, no. The pads for both, both of them? I'm guessing the pads work for both. I know I'll, I'll have to test them out and let you know. See what the difference is between the two. Yeah. No, I'm thinking that one of them is stronger. One of them is like uh, for longer range. I think it's like a few meters around you, so it can be like if you're going camping or anything like that, you can put it like next to you and next to the people ne uh, like that are closer, and it will work. I think this is the uh, this is the five watt uh, version, and the other one is a ten watt, so it should have like a longer uh, range. It heats them up and creates this uh, again scent or whatever that the mosquitoes don't like. We'll have to see how how well this works, but uh, it's 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 interesting. At least uh, there's other insects flying around. Maybe that yeah. <laughs> works on all of them. I'm 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 guessing it's specifically for mosquitoes, but we'll see. It's great. Again, I said this uh, about Nightcore in a previous video. I think it's great that they're thinking about other in the field type uh, yeah. uh, things. Like this is not necessarily for photography. This is like for general camping and stuff. But, but you know, you only you tend to think about the big things and you know, the camera, the transmission, whatever, video, audio. But if you're standing there and you got flies in your face because, and you're doing something or you're shooting birds and you got mosquitoes, yeah, that, this is me. Yeah, that for sure. We'll test it and, and let you know uh, in a future video or in a review of shorts or something, you know, how, how, how well does this work? Uh, so I want to talk about something which is pretty dear to my heart or at least close to my heart. And I'll explain in a second why. But uh, just as a background, art is you can see on the on the table is <laughs> is a Mac user. I'm a PC user. Uh, he uses uh, iOS. I use Android. So we have uh, this uh, uh, thing between us. But the thing is that uh, for the longest time, if you wanted a good laptop, uh, a PC laptop, uh, you were, I mean, your ability to actually upgrade some of the components was pretty limited. With with a Mac, I don't think that you can upgrade anything. No. Can, can you upgrade? I mean, the memory, you can upgrade this. Well, the, the newer versions? Nothing. It's a sealed off environment. What you buy is what you get and that's it. Yeah. yeah. I, I I don't know what to say. I hate this. This is this is one of the, the things I hate the most about Apple. The closed system. Everything is closed. You, you pay for what you get and everything else is either like with an an extra, usually pretty big premium, or you can't do anything and you need to buy a new product. I don't like it. Now, even with when on the PC side. I mean, it's a psychologist. <laughs> so yeah, uh, that aside, uh, on the PC side, I'm talking about side. On the PC side, I mean, if you're going for like a Lenovo or HP or Dell or anything of that sort, uh, you usually can upgrade uh, the storage and the mem the memory. That's usually the 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 max that you can upgrade. You can upgrade the CPU, obviously. You can upgrade the motherboard. You can upgrade the me the GPU. Um, obviously, you can change the keyboard, I think, or or the connections. And, and this is one thing. When I'm looking at a new uh, computer, again. For your side, you just buy whatever it is that they have. It is what it is. You don't have a lot of choices. I mean, you can buy like the 13-inch version or the 16-inch version or whatever. But other than that, there are not a lot of options. On the PC side, um, you have a lot of options. And what I usually look at, almost the first, the first thing that I'm looking when I'm looking for a new laptop is what connection it has, connections. And... I'm, I don't know why, but if you look at most of the like, latest, like, when I'm saying latest, it's like the, the last couple of years. Uh, 
they have less and less connections. So you see like Thunderbolts and maybe a AC connector. Sometimes you don't even have an AC. One of the Thunderbolts also powers the laptop. But you, you have like an AC, Thunderbolt, maybe USB-A. And if you're lucky, you have HDMI. That's usually it. And then obviously like one 3.5 millimeter jack for both headphones and microphone, which I don't like at all. I don't know why they moved into like this single thing sort of thing, but whatever. So this is what you have. So you can't upgrade the internals aside from the memory and, and storage. And the connections are dwindling. I don't know how to say it. You know, like you have less and less connections. And now, it's not now, but for the last couple of years, there is also a different solution. Yeah. A, a company called Framework. Uh, has been developing uh, a different sort of laptop, which uh, is basically, they call it a repairable laptop, but I don't see the repairability as the biggest like uh, aspect of it. I see the upgradability as the biggest aspect. Basically, it's, an, it's not exactly open source, but it's open, it's much more open than any other laptop that I'm familiar with. So the idea is, and now the, the reason why I'm talking about this now, because they had like a 13 inch version for like years now, like three or four years. Um, they now came up with a 16 inch version, which is much more interesting and I'll explain why. What this uh, 16 inch version has is basically you can, first of all, you can change and repair everything yourself. So you can change very easily. There are instructions and everything, and with like a single screwdriver, you can change the monitor. So you can switch the monitor on your laptop. Obviously, you know, you, you need to have a, a one that fits that laptop, but uh, they should probably come up with like for the 16 inch version for like, at the moment, uh, it's, it's like a, a pretty good monitor or, or panel, but it's not a touch screen, for example. So maybe in the future, they will have a touch screen. So they come up with a yeah an they will come up but or you can have a third party that you yeah exactly so they I think most of their hardware maybe even all of their hardware is like open to third party manufacturers to come up with their own solutions and there are also already like a couple of like optional things for their laptops uh, from third parties but the more successful they are probably the more third party manufacturers will, will so develop it makes sense things. when there's a market for yeah for sure so basically what you can do is is get the 16 inch version it has like six uh, Thunderbolt or I think it's USB 4 so it's sort of like Thunderbolt uh, connectors built in and you can buy these adapters small adapters uh, and they cost like a few bucks they're very inexpensive and it's like either USB C USB A uh HDMI, display port. You, you can have like a display port. You can have like three HDMIs out of a single laptop. It's it's amazing. Uh, so you don't need like, a, I hate all those um, external, how do you call them? Hubs or docks or whatever. You know, you have to carry an extra thing. Here you have six options and you can have like, you can very easily like put them out and, and put a new one. So in the bag, you can have like a couple of those and just put whatever you need at the same. Can hot swap them or just pull it out? And I'm not sure if they're, I would guess they're, hot, yeah, they are probably hot swappable. Oh, that's interesting. Because it's it's basically USB. So why not yeah. hot swap them? Yeah. So that that's cool. And of course, Thunderbolt uh, or USB 4 and uh, audio. I'm not sure. I think it has audio built in as, as it is, but uh, probably a few other things. Now, the biggest thing that they have on the 16-inch version that they didn't have on the 13-inch is uh, an option to replace. Uh, basically, the 13-inch version had a built-in uh, graphics card on, on the, on the, next to the CPU, basically. And this one also has this. Uh, the, the, the first iteration, as far as I know, comes only with AMD. But the 13-inch version also had uh, an, Intel, an Intel version. Uh, and and you can swap because the I think the original one was uh, Intel Gen 10 and then it was like Gen 11, 12, and now 13. So people who bought the original version could swap to it's it, you swap the entire motherboard and the CPU yeah. and it's supposed to be pretty easy like uh, I don't know half an hour I don't know how much time it will take you uh, but you can completely swap the the CPU 
and and have like a brand new computer basically. Now with this 16 inch version, you now can also add a GPU. And the way you add it is in the back. So it- a module that sticks on. Yeah, exactly. So it sticks from the back a little bit, but uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I think the first one is going to be an AMD. They, they work very closely with AMD. So it's going to be an AMD uh, external GPU, basically. I'm not sure the version. Maybe I'll write it on the screen. But uh, that that's going to be really interesting because it means that this can be actually a, a dedicated editing machine. So that's cool. Uh, and, and one which you can upgrade every like two or three years or whatever uh, without like buying a whole new computer. One interesting feature that they have is th they have like the, this whole ecosystem. So if you upgrade the, the motherboard and the CPU and whatnot, what you can do is use the old parts because the old parts are still working, uh, supposedly. So you have like, let's say, a, a 10 generation Intel CPU and you swap it for a 13 gen and then you take the engine and you put it in a case with like a, a PSU and all the stuff that you need memory and, and, and all the rest and with this you have like another desktop like computer it's it's portable because it's like super yeah. tiny but you know so you have another computer and you, you don't just throw things away yeah this is exactly their, their concept so the concept is repairability and uh, upgradability and green and how you want to call it like a, a green vision i've been able to talk to their ceo actually and i asked him a few questions um basically i tried to understand what's you know what's up what's coming he, he couldn't say much but he was very open and i'm really hoping that like a little bit further uh, down, down the road the, the computer is not completely out yet they, they sort of announced it, but... This year? Yeah, I'm thinking that they're still a fairly small company. So I'm thinking they produce them in batches. So maybe some people will receive theirs like very early. I think that they, they ran out of like uh, the... They didn't run out of, but they, they had like batches. And when they announced it like a pre-order, they, you know, they clean like the first, second, third, fourth yeah, batches in, in, in like less than a day so it was like nuts uh, there's plenty of people i would love a lot of diy tweakers and and people and again i'm i'm i don't see myself as a, as a big like diy computer person but this is something that i i'm really interested in and uh, hopefully we'll have a chance to test it when the gpu is ready because i'm not sure if the gpu will be ready when the computer is i don't know we'll have to see but if we get a chance, we'll also do an interview with the CEO and ask him like a bunch more questions again later on this year. Uh, so do that's... They, do they send it out as a puzzle and you can put it together? Well, yeah, yeah. That, you, you said it as, as, as a funny thing, but no, it's actually, you, would, you have two I options. I would not like that option. <laughs> no, 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 you have two options. You can either buy the computer pre-assembled and it costs a little bit more, or you can buy it as components okay, if it's and it's less and money then yeah it makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah you can assemble it yourself if you're okay with with uh, with assembling that can be pretty cool now we'll we'll have to see what which version we'll get but yeah that that can be interesting uh so that's uh, that is framework uh, we have a video from one of my favorite uh, youtubers actually uh or creators i don't know what, I don't know what to call him daniel schiffer uh, so Daniel Schiffer is a uh, he works primarily at uh, like shooting uh, product uh, videos, we, very similar to some of the stuff that we do. It's just amazing, but uh, uh, his level of like editing is 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 really really good. Uh, so he did like um, he experimented with this um, software service I think called yeah the uh, it's called Runway by the way Runway yeah. Um, so it changes it's like there's a bunch of them now right yeah. you do a prompt and it creates video for you right or you can do you can put in an image say you take what his um, his take on on this service was you create a, a very nice uh, product image right 
It's stylized. Yeah, he showed like he, he showed like a different uh, person. Yeah, somebody else who put, put up there uh, like a, a, an amazing like a shoe, I think, or something. Yeah, almost a, a like perfect. a cologne or something. Yeah. Right. and then you put that image into the into the AI, and the neuro, whatever. Uh, yeah, the filters, and they create. So it's uh, I think you can prompt it, or you can just it just generate. Yeah. automatically. And it's supposed to create like this uh, a video out of that image, right? So you you create a pretty a really nice image, and then that the the service will create a video out of that. Sounds great. <laughs> the, the the results that he showed of this other person the was, was really great. impressive. He tried it. I know what you what what's your thoughts? I. It was really trippy. It, yeah, it's it, it looked very. I raw. would call it like beta first generation. I don't know how you want to call it. It's a great proof of concept. Yeah, but it's not. You it's not there yet. It's not like click done. No. right? I, I I don't know if. I guess what you would do is, uh, you create the image or you go into that service with a specific uh, idea already. Yeah. If there's a way to to prompt it, if there's a way to to highlight or to select the area where you want that. Yeah. The the the, the um that movement to, yeah to be yeah. But as is, it's really no, no, it's, it looks it's like, strange. Yeah. It looks like an acid dream. Dream. It's yeah. No, it's it, it's as I said, it's it's a very much a first generation sort of thing. But you know the the at the rate that things are going, yeah, in a year? one or two years, this is going to to take some of the jobs off a lot of like, uh, I I would think I'm not sure if it's like for full fledged commercials, but for like uh, TikTok, Instagram, yeah. uh, I mean social if, stuff. If you can create a really cool uh, movement, or instead of replicate or or doing it in camera, and you need a robot to do this whole thing, yeah, but you can stick that in, and within seconds you have it. And it's a it's a half a second clip yeah. in your big project. Why not? Yeah. You know? No, I I don't I don't think that at the moment it has any option of moving the image that you have. So it, I don't no, think it can course. replace I'm, the raw. I'm talking and, the two years, and you know, I think that will be a different thing. But for the background, for sure. Yeah, but I think it's one of the tools that at this point, as professionals, we start incorporating into our workflow. Yeah. It's not like oh, I'm going to be out of a job in two years. Some people will, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. if you know how to incorporate these things and and see see ahead and say, okay, I will be able to instead of buying a a thirty thousand dollar robot, you can replicate that movement from a a a, a still, yeah, or, yeah, you know, or a three sixty that that orbital rig, or yeah, you know. no, the. the well, again, it depends on what exactly do you want to see. If you want to spin a product, then you will still need to find a way to shoot it from every angle. Well, not not if you have really advanced AI that understands what that product is and can calculate. I, no. I know. I'm saying I'm looking way ahead. I'm thinking. No, I'm, I'm thinking of, of a different thing that might happen. You know, you, you might have like a product. You will take your phone or even your camera without like stabilizing anything. You will just yeah, no, around so- it. The computer will, like the AI, will understand what it is, create like an actual super realistic model, and then do a 360, which will be like super smooth and everything. That can work. It will take more, probably more than two years. But of course, of but, but that can. That's where we're headed, and yeah, the technology will allow us to to create amazing visuals with less. Work and and less yeah exactly less sophisticated like something that uh, would have required Hollywood like twenty years ago and now requires like uh, gear and thousands of dollars you can probably do with your smartphone right. in like three four or five years so yeah that's uh, so but that's where it's heading but for now you can play with it runway uh, go and try it uh, at the moment as you said it's kind of trippy but. You don't know what you're looking at, <laughs> and you go. Yeah, it's it's double it, it, taking with you. Yeah. Uh, so th- we have a, a camera announcement. I know it's like that. That one is strange. Yeah. It's called the trippy thing. Another yeah, but in different uh, in a different way. This is called Amkov R5. I know. I I ran into this somewhere in Kickstarter, and I I I brought it in just to say 
look, I know the 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 people who are behind this. I'm guessing it's a Chinese uh, thing, but you know, I would bring it just as an example of something which is like. I don't want to say too much like bad stuff about it because obviously I didn't try it, but it feels like basically somebody took the specs from a low-end camera, something like that, a cam- smartphone camera, put it in the body of sort of a mirrorless. They call it a mirrorless, but it's not mirrorless. It, you, you can't change the lenses. It's a fixed lens as far as I can tell. Uh, it's a fixed zoom lens. Uh, I think it says like five eight, uh, five x uh, five x optical and another eight x uh, whatever. Electronic. Yeah, which and then they say it's like a crystal clear glass, and then they have like this abbreviation for it, which I I, I know they invented all sorts of. It's like two DPS lens glass. Yeah, so uh, you need to be really careful. I mean, it's like it's super inexpensive and everything, but I would say you would probably you are going to get the image quality. I expect to get the image quality of a of a smartphone, a lower end smartphone, out of this. Look, it's there was a place in the market for mirror for point Combat. and shoots, right? Well, yeah. like, you can go back. We actually do every year. Edo does a a, a breakdown of, yeah. of the industry. Uh, what what it's doing and we've seen declines and that because everybody has a cell phone it's easier to just point and shoot with that instead of having another camera and point and shoot with that yeah, yeah. so there is that market i don't know if they're late i don't know if they're trying to revive that market what the actual benefit is i'm not 100 flip screen uh, man yeah. but i don't know yeah it's just no, the the thing is that the way I look at this, forget about this specific camera. I, I want to say something about smartphones versus cameras in general. So the way I see it, cameras, I mean, smartphone are, the, the image quality, especially in the higher end ones, is fantastic. Like in, in good daylight, like in, in specific in, lighting, it, you, you can get like really good image. However, in... L- lesser light it's still not there it will it will you know it will improve i'm sure oh. but one thing that doesn't improve is the ergonomics yeah uh, a smartphone is not something which is convenient to hold for a long time like pressing the monitor the screen to start shooting is not ideal because it moves the whole thing it's even with a stabilizer it's like it's awkward to hold it like this so I'm thinking, I know, point and shoot or like a, a small camera with a large sensor still has a place in the market. And there are not a lot of them anymore. So that's, that's one thing. And on the other hand, maybe there is still room for like something that will let you like have better ergonomics with your phone. And there have been all sorts of attempts to do this. Yeah, there's rigs, there's like snap-on yeah. uh, body where you like grips and whatever. That's true. I am thinking that there needs to be something that turns the 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 phone into more of a camera with a lot of physical bottoms. And this we haven't seen much. Yeah. Uh, I've seen some that try to mimic like two bottoms, like a bottom and a, and a dial, but not not too many. So. That will be interesting if somebody will come up with with a rig for probably for an iPhone because that's like the most like uh, ubiquitous uh, uh, device on the market, a single uh, device on the market. But uh, that can be interesting. This uh, Amkov R5, I know. Yeah. <laughs> so that's uh, I, I wouldn't call it a scam. I know, but. No, be careful with what you uh, finance on Kickstarter. That's that's everything. That's all I can say. Uh, re- read the fine prints and, and read reviews if, if possible. Uh, so that's that. Uh, the next product is really interesting. That's uh, that's uh, It's called Yoshino, I think, B4000. They have a whole series of them. A lineup, yeah, yeah, from like a small one to this is the largest one. Yeah, so this is basically a solid state uh, battery, or uh, you can think of it as a, a battery, um, like so, a, like a generator. Yeah, exactly. With like, with battery, it, it's but it has several uh, innovations which I think are really interesting because there are a lot of them like on the market. 
photographers have been using them for a couple of years. Like uh, we, we want to get one to use here in the studio and for productions. Uh, maybe this one, I know we'll, we can talk to the company. The thing is this, um, this one is, as far as I know, the first uh, solid state uh, battery of this sort. Now, most of the, the, like the, um, the existing ones that are on the market are lithium ion, or lithium polymer, or all sorts of like uh, uh, conventional or more conventional batteries. This is um, a completely different sort of technology. It's, it's not based on liquid or anything like that. It's, it's solid state. I'm not sure exactly how the technology works, but what it allows the, 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 the manufacturer the, um, of this battery is to basically make the whole thing significantly smaller. Smaller and with, and lighter. A, and with a larger output. Yeah. So uh, again, it's, it's obviously a trade-off. So you, you can have a, the same size and the same weight, but a lot more output uh, or like the same or smaller yeah, it's like size and weight. Si size of some of the... And, and, and weighs like yeah. half, half. half it. So it's, a, it's really amazing. It's, it's I, lo I love the design, by the way. Yeah, the design is like really compact and minimal. And I think, I think it's uh, 50 pounds. I'm not sure in kilograms how much. 20, 20 something. Yeah, it's, it's not very heavy. Uh, relatively speaking, it's four kilowatt. So that's that's a lot. You can yeah. you can think about it. If with four kilowatts, you can have like, what, four, easily four uh, 600 watt lights. More. Way, way more, yeah. Yeah, more than five. I know, I know yeah. No, it, it probably depends on the amperage as well. I, I'm not sure, but... All in the video, uh, uh, Tony, Tommy uh, Calway, or... Uh, he shows the, the his studio with all the lights yeah. on. With all the lights on at, like, the at maximum power, you just pull it, like, a 1.2 kilowatt. Yeah. Right. No, I think 2 point something. He connected all sorts of stuff to that. All right. Oh, yeah. I mean... Just, just a lot just, setup. Yeah. So yeah, if you're in the field and you want two big lights, there's plenty of power. Yeah, for that for sure. No, the the, the thing I think the, the the size and weight are really important here because if you're taking it, this is I mean the big ones, gigantic. They will take up like if you have like a yeah, relatively small trunk, yeah. they they can take up like th a third of your trunk. This one, this is like really small. You can put it uh, even in the back seat, like under the, the, the feet or something, or I don't know, it's like really easy. And um, I mean, it, it is, this one is pretty expensive, but it's to be expected, it's a new technology and- But also you don't need the four, no, th four for, kilowatts uh, no, for, the, for the, the most, no. the field work, right? Half or even or third. Production, yeah, you're gonna want a few of yeah. those, but uh, there's a 660. I think that's like the that's like the mid uh, range. I would probably take over a kilowatt for for the stuff that we do. But okay, I mean, uh, I I'm, I always talk about this like li lights with batteries, right? Yeah. If we have something like this, a solid state battery that's small, compact, it's light, and then you can hook up three lights to it. Yeah. Uh, not huge ones, but you know, two hundred yeah. or something, uh, yeah. one fifteens. Yeah, that 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 can work. Yeah. So that's uh, that's an interesting uh, product. If we have a chance, uh, we'll definitely review it uh, for you. Uh, there is something a bit different. Uh, there is in development a new Tamron seventy to two one one hundred and eighty second generation. Uh, so I, I know they, usually when they just announce the development of a new product, they don't really tell you. What no, they they don't tell you all the changes. So in this case, what did they say? I think the the optics are a little bit different. Yeah, I think there's a lot of um, their uh, the the electronics. Oh, a lot the older focus. Well, it's like the stabilization. Ah, okay. Because all that is like next gen. Uh, the the I'm not sure about the optics, but it, it yeah, is I different think weight than, than size. Oh, okay. It's actually a bit heavier. Heavier. Okay. I don't know if. The original one was pretty light, so that's fine. So yeah, but yeah, okay. So that's just a development announcement. We'll have to see, you know, when they actually come up with the product and if we have a chance to review it. We didn't review the first generation, but maybe this one. And uh, talking about lenses, the Lawa uh, Venus Optics has a a new uh, again. This is, I think, not a full uh, announcement, but they have. Uh, the 24 millimeter, now it's T8 uh, probe lens. Yeah. 
It's uh, two weeks. Probe and Periscope. And, uh, yeah, exactly. The, the, I think that the existing version, they have like a three or four versions now of this. We have the first generation. Well, the original, Then which they is just came up with, I think, a probe. And then they came up with something which is like a probe which you can replace the, 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 the actual, how they call it, the, the tube thing. And this one is something completely different. So it's faster. Uh, the, the faster thing is really important because the, the previous one were T14. So you need a, like a ton of light. And when going down from T14 to T8, that's, that, that's a big difference. Yeah. So I, I've been hearing that this might be very expensive. I'm not sure. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, the previous one was cheap. Previous the, previous, the previous one was like the, the, the second or third generation was also pretty expensive, yeah. over $2,000. Four, I think, hundred. Oh, yeah. So. And this one might be even more expensive. And yeah, because it, I, it looks from what it looks like, it, it's a periscope on the end and it's a periscope on the. So basically, it's a, it's a bracket type shape where you can, it, with a long, such a long format, uh, like physical yeah. format. The specific things that you can do it, but yeah. there's plenty of things that you can't because exactly. it's just yeah. swings every which way. So if you can, if you can change that angle and change the angle. Of- oh, you mean that you can actually? That's interesting. You, it's like a like um, very angle sort of thing. I don't know if it's multiple angle, but it's at least it, it ah, it's so- straight, and you can turn it ninety degrees down. Without replacing any components? That's what it looks like. Wow. And then the end of it is 90 degrees. So basically you have the camera here. It's It points down and, and shoots this way, right? So uh, it's a space. Oh, so you can sh- shoot either downward or forward, whatever, and and, o- and also angle it if you like. Wow. That's, that's interesting. But we'll have to see about the price because, yeah, if it's significantly more expensive, then it's starting to become like... It's a very specialty list. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Even even like the first gen- generation was, yeah. Right. Um, so... But there is no other way of, of getting some of these exactly. shots. Exactly. Some of these shots, if you if that's what you're shooting all the time and yeah. you need that lens, that's just a fine. We, we actually used ours for a commercial, for a beverage commercial that we did. We shoot it downwards into like a glass of... Uh, um, soda, soda, or whatever. Yeah, that that was you know there was no other way of doing that. Yeah. So uh, with the probe lens, you can move between things. Yeah, it's a, uh, like a sideways probe lens. Uh, so that's uh, the Lawa Twenty Four. Uh, DJI has a bunch of new products. Uh, the first one I think is called DJI Transmission. Yeah. Uh, so that's uh, they already have basically they have the transmission technology for a long time with their like uh, drones. And, and but now the, and and they had this I uh, think external monitor, but now they also have like the the actual transmitter or yeah. So it's it's basically it's called DJI transmission, and you can have like one transmitter with endless receivers or something like that. So it has different modes. What what else does it have? It's um, yeah, it's a basically it's a it's a whole ecosystem where you can connect. It's wireless uh, video. Audio also. Um, you can just have all your cameras transmit to the and to a, a, a monitor, a multiple monitor. It's, it's a very, it's like a teradec level right. device. It's not. It's their, of of course, their experience and expertise is yeah. and, and making sure that you have stable transmission for a really long distance. Exactly. So for specific use cases where there's a bunch of interference, there's a bunch of different cameras, yeah. a bunch of different uh, monitors for focus pullers and directors and, and uh, whatnot, yeah. it, it makes sense. This is pr- probably for a much higher end uh, oh. productions, yeah, for for sure. And and I think it also has this the ability to connect to their like external monitor, which can control some like the the gimbal their gimbals i think can be controlled from the monitor so it's an it's a it's a full ecosystem that's that's i think the the main concept okay so that's one dji product the the second was announced i think even before that it's called the dji osmo action 4 right. so it's another action camera that was released uh, recently uh, uh, it's an action it's, camera. yeah it's, i know I, I think that there are a lot of like changes between this and the previous one i think it's a bigger sensor there's a better there's always like the the next gen of, of a lot of the software yeah. electronics 
so better light, better light, better bigger sensor, better light reception. Yeah, because it's always like they work great until you go into uh, lower uh, light situations. Yeah, for and sure. The image is not good. Yeah. So that's what they're working on. It's the same type of body. The only difference is it says four instead of three. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, no, I mean, if you're in the market and want to buy the three and now they're four out, you'll probably buy it if the price is more or less the same. Um, so another product from Lawa, maybe we should have but, um, like packed them together, but it said that was also announced recently is the Nanomorph uh, 65 millimeter and 80 millimeter T uh, 2.4. And they also have like a one... 33x uh, front anamorphic adapter. Right, these are anamorphic lenses that, or the, I think it's a 1.6 or 1.5 as is, and then you can put a, a 1.3, three extra, and you get a 1.8 squeeze. Yeah, squeeze right. Which, yeah, and they they're at T 2.4. I know much more about them other than you know that. I'm not. I'm not sure if they're going to be in IBC. If they will be in IBC, we'll yeah. definitely go and talk to them and show you, you know, uh, all these uh, new products because they're definitely interesting. But uh, we don't really have a chance to play with them too much. Uh, and a final uh, product for today is something again where we were in this uh, sort of like higher end uh, production, uh, uh, like uh, big, big cameras. Big cameras. This uh, this talk. So Zakudo has something, I don't know where I found it. It's called the Rotator uh, for large cameras. I'm not sure if this is the actual name. But uh, it's basically, it, it's a product. We covered the, um, the same rotator. sort of uh, rotator for lenses recently. Uh, so it, it's basically, it allows you to rotate fairly easily, like Bigger rigs, so if you have, uh, I'm not it's sure if the L bracket with double uh, quick release plates on 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 both on ends, both sides, where you can just release switch. Okay. Yeah, so if you have like a, I don't know FX6 or a C300 or something of that sort, I'm not sure if a, a Venice will maybe it will. I know like the bigger cameras, but you take this, you you turn it around, and and you get like uh, if you need to shoot, it's kind of I always kind of find it kind of silly you know what you're you're using like a venice camera and then you're shooting for social shop yeah exactly so but maybe i know if you want the colors of uh venice and the look of a venice for a tiktok uh, video maybe they'll start shooting full feature films and vertical i don't know no but think about it I, i'm thinking like maybe big brands which are shooting like an actual commercial yeah, like a Nike. and then exactly let's say nike want to shoot a commercial but they want like the same look for the actual commercial and the tiktok or instagram or whatever like uh, vertical video so the only thing that you need to do is like put this shoot the actual commercial horizontal twist it and you have like uh so it can work uh i still think that working in posts and just cropping will if you have open gate and whatever it depends on the camera uh, it depends on what your yeah how you frame I it mean, if you exactly. have that no your uh, storyboard or your uh, yeah I know where the things are in the frame if you have something on the side then it won't work it is what it is but uh, it, it li at least you have an option if if you really want to uh, so uh, don't forget to subscribe and uh, check out the uh, the full article on Lensvid and uh, we'll see you next time bye bye. I had the jingle. <laughs> so you want to do the jingle? Uh, the jingle. Lens vid, lens vid, lens vid for the nations. <laughs>